What's up guys, Tim Little, Matt Allen, welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we're doing some summertime fishing down in Florida. We're gonna be power fishing, frogs, chatter baits, swim baits, gonna try and stick some big large mouth. Let's go. Good one, in. <laughs> <laughs> that is the way to start right there. We'll take it. Frog eater. Jackhammer. <laughs> Munched it. That's that new Bobby's perfect frog. Oh, he got it. Man, that's fun. Murder your uh, chatterbait too? Nope. Just load it up. It. The one that I lost went slack. This one stopped it. Neither one crunched it. Hey, buddy. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Got him on the top water, little whopper plopper. You know, summertime in Florida can be hot, uncomfortable, but uh, if you have the proper clothing, sun gear, sunscreen, all that sort of stuff, can get used to the heat and the humidity, summertime bass fishing in Florida can be awesome. You know, get yourself some good gear, get out early, and uh, you can have some of the best summertime fishing ever down here in Florida. You think they'd be sitting right there. Come on out of there. <laughs> you got a mouthful of grass. Half ounce, black and blue swim jig. Nice fish. Got him. Up in that grass. Coming in. <laughs> he was way up shallow in some grass. But that swim jig can go anywhere. Not 
Nice one, dude. That will do. Big old belly on that one. What a fish. He absolutely crushed it. That one knows how to eat. Look at the belly on that fish. Wow. That is awesome. Summertime. You can come out to these fisheries and throw a worm. That's what a lot of people do. Usually in the summertime when the water temps get up high, people slow down and worm fish. And there's a reason for it, it works. But there is so much more adrenaline, so much more excitement, so much more fun to power fish. And as you're seeing, you can do it, it works. Uh, you, you cover more water. You notice we're covering a lot of ground. Uh, but it doesn't take long to get another bite. And it's just so exciting. That one knocked the fire out of it. That sprinker. Thanks to you. Nice. I kept the other catch right there, right? Sure you threw that straight into his mouth. <laughs> as soon as it came out of the dropped in, he just smoked it. <laughs> Thanks, bud. That is amazing. He was sitting in a tiny little, maybe 18 inch wide gap between two different grass beds. When you go out and you fish in the summertime, especially around grass, this is really where it's key is a grass fishery. Whoa, that's a giant. We'll talk about this in a second. Leave it on your outside. Get you down with so big. All right, we got distracted by an absolutely giant blow up that went off over here. But what I was going to talk to you about is when you're on a fishery with a lot of grass, summertime can be downright scary 
unless you're fishing deeper water away from the grass. But there is a trick and it's why Tim and I were able to drop in here. Haven't been down here in six months, seven months, no clue what's going on and just immediately start getting bites from our very first stop. And it's not because we have some incredible skill set or something. It's because we understand how to predict where these fish will position. So when you've got a lot of grass, what these fish are going to do is set up on edges. If you were in a Highland reservoir, you can see the shoreline and you fish the shoreline. But in a place like this, I'm going to cover up here in a place like this, where you've got these giant expansive grass flats, there is no shoreline, but there might as well be. What there is, is grass edges. Now that can be an edge where grass is up against deep water. That can be where grass meets shallow water and it won't grow up ultra shallow. Like that last fish I caught, that's what that was. But it can also be the edge between two different kinds of grass. So where hydrilla butts up against some other form of grass right on that edge, they will treat that almost like a shoreline. And it's very, did you hear that blow up? It was on me. That was on you? Yeah, I hooked him, came off and he jumped like 50 hours. <laughs> <laughs> did I say it was predictable? Did I mention that? These fish sit right on these edges as if it was a hard shoreline. So even though we're out in the middle of a grass flat, we can find those little spots that are different, go right down those edges, fishing with confidence, catching fish just as easily as if we were in a Highland Reservoir and we were just going down the bank casting. You know, there we'd be throwing a square bill or a lipless or a Kitek. Here we're throwing swim jig, chatterbait, topwater, a frog, but it's the exact same thing. Once you wrap your mind around getting on the edges of that grass and then the entire game just becomes so much simpler. These fisheries aren't anywhere near as overwhelming as they used to be and you can go out and catch them. Oh. How can a little guy hit that hard? He meant business. <laughs> there we go. Swim jig. He munched it. That was cool. Thanks, buddy. I switched colors. Went to a green pumpkin red, the matching big bite on the back of there. I love that trailer. That one is one that stood out in our underwater footage. So I had to put it on and try it. Didn't take long to get bit. All right, guys, we're gonna wrap it up. We've got some thunderheads starting to build and we've got a long drive ahead of us today. So we're gonna get on the road, but we had an absolute blast out here. We used a one-two punch today. It was all reaction, all power fishing, despite being a hot, 
summer day. You can catch these fish power fishing in the middle of summer. Um, we used a two-pronged approach, fishing subsurface baits and fishing topwater. Uh, essentially, chatterbait and swim jig were the primary subsurface baits, and then a frog, specifically that, what frog were you throwing? Was that a sprinker? Yeah, the first fish was on the bobby, the new bobbies, and then the sprinker was the... So bobby's perfect frog and a sprinker, and then a whopper plopper. And uh, the bigger fish definitely came on the subsurface baits today, but Tim was gambling on the long game, trying to get that really, really big bite. There is something special about topwater in the summertime. You don't usually get the most bites, but you've got a shot at a monster. And if you noticed, the whopper plopper he was throwing was black. It doesn't match any of the bait fish that are in here. It doesn't look like a bluegill. It doesn't look like a shad. But there's something about a large black topwater in the summertime that just gets that really, really big bite. So he went for it. Unfortunately, it didn't happen today. We got our better fish on a swim jig and a chatterbait, uh, but we caught fish on all of it, which is incredible. I mean, it's the middle of summer and literally everything we threw, we got bit on. We have no complaints. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned a little bit about grass fishing. Uh, now down here in Florida, we use some different colors and you know black blues and some of those different shades that we don't use as much in other parts of the country. But down in the video description, we'll link these specific baits. If you're fishing down here, those are good colors to look at, but we'll include some of our favorite colors as well, which is what we would be throwing in more traditional, clearer water, less tannic water like you've got down here. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.